if you understand the depths of this, and this is, let me, I just have to lock in one more concept of realization that comes with the egregor, that every person that believes in it, whether positive or negative, feeds it. So this means if you never can get control of your mind and actually focus on what you want, and you're constantly even focusing on the things that you don't like or who you don't like, because those are all concepts, <laughs> those are all ideas that have been formed into some energy pocket, some emotional pocket that you can attach yourself into, oftentimes what happens is, is you stay in this whole negative, positive, oscillating mode. And then what occurs is you feed it, and this then allows it to have more power to trigger you again to get the food again. So this means that every single thing that you don't want to happen, when you keep thinking about it, it starts to happen. And I've watched people tear apart their lives with this without ever realizing that they're actually the ones causing it because they don't have control of their mind. And more importantly, they don't know how to keep their mind from being engaged into a dualistic cog, okay? And that cog is known as the R-complex. So just like a gearbox, when you enter the R-complex, which is the reptilian side of the brain, you can Google it, R-complex, and you'll see it come back on Wikipedia. It's the most primitive side of your consciousness. And it just so happens that all the stinginess, all the fight and flight, all the, uh, the money, the concepts of the money, language, all of those things are actually inside of the R complex. And because the R complex becomes so crowded and small, and plus it has a certain kind of makeup within itself, it, you can't actually fit your limitless dream in this R complex. And this often means why you can't articulate it most of the time to others, that you can't even benefit uh, uh, benefit of, uh, with manifesting it because you don't know how to get into the space that it can truly manifest. So this is actually what we'll begin to knock down during these sessions in ambassador training. And then when we start talking about things like ads and things like creating websites and things like, you know, what is the core mission of your product or what you're designing and building, you will know all the real pillars to how to create something that don't hinder it predominantly you. We are the biggest things in the way of ourselves, and it's because every time we go into a judgment, we are putting a stop in our own thoughts. And because you don't actually need to think, you could allow your consciousness to go freely if you didn't always try to judge every single moment. Now that may be a little bit difficult to comprehend, so we'll go a little bit further. The last thing is to realize that egregors have antennas that what keeps something alive that was created two, three, four thousand years ago? Well, it just so happens that in this reality that we're in, nothing really goes anywhere. It only changes form and changes shape. So truthfully, what we have is, is that even within, let's take an example of Christianity, when a person dies in the belief that Christianity is the way that they lived it as, which of course was probably changed from the original, even in their bones, even in their bones, they still are radiating that belief. So it's no wonder then why you see a lot of people just buried in the cemetery that, especially at that last moment when they're about to die, they're like, oh God, please, Jesus, whoever, please. And then they're doing that with more fervence than they've ever done in their lives because they now they know, hey, it's pretty much now time to go. And that fills their bones. And then they just sit into this graveyard and then they just keep wreaking that. And that makes it easier for other people who may not actually be on that same path to start becoming susceptible to believing in that egregor, right? And then you, when you start believing in it, if there's a God, then there must be a devil. So now you're breaking your energy into a parts again. Now you're into the division because there's people that are doing what God wants them to do and the people who are not doing what God wants them to do. And then there's your role in it, which is the good one, this soft lamb meat, that when someone else that doesn't even realize that they're on the, let's say, bad side of things, because in their mind, they're, they're thinking they're the good ones too, does something because you're more vulnerable to them, then this is a very negative experience is what I'm saying. This is how we begin to design our reality when we just accept something that immediately has us judging. And that's what I call the slippery slope. And I'm 
only drilling this in now because in the future when we talk about a lot of things about your levels of success, it'll be important for you to come right back to this. And it's repetitious because it's actually something that is really designed to fix the problem. I don't want this to turn into a philosophy for you. I want this to be something that you click with and say, yeah, okay. Because some people will say, well, how do you destroy an egregor then? Okay, and when you read the documents, the documents say the only way you can destroy an egregor is actually to burn it. And I find this interesting because maybe you'll see why even cremation is not a, a really a thing that's uh, allowed in Christianity and Islam. Because once you burn something, then it's basically all the concepts and the ideas and the artificial side of it is completely destroyed. Okay, now this allows us to tap into something very, very interesting, something very, very specific, because we start realizing with that that in all of this, instead of trying to look at other egregors and other companies and other people that are doing, not doing what you want them to do, you need to ask yourself, have you created an egregor? Have you been focusing on some kind of illusion using your mind and bringing life into something that actually doesn't or didn't understand the whole principles of balance. And now you're living in it as if it's you. And we can call it the body, right? And it's gotten so tied in to who you are that now you think you need to sleep. Now you think you need to breathe. Now you think that you need all these different emotions when you actually don't need anything. You have it all inside yourself. Now you think, you think, you think, you think, you think. And you can't stop thinking. And because this thinking is naturally imbalanced, it wears down your body. You start to appear older. You start to become more dense, okay? So I'm actually highlighting here the keys to it all. Now, the surface is actually judging people. The depth is even judging that there is a sun outside and that there is a night and there is a day. You know, that's how deep egregors get because you have billions of people believing that tomorrow is going to come, so thus more than likely tomorrow will come, but also the power that tomorrow holds. So to remove yourself from all of this back and forth, yin and yang, you only need to begin to accomplish how to get out of judgment. So we're nearing somewhat of the middle of today's conversation. I'm going to check time. I think we're about an hour in, and there are some things that we actually have to discuss that tie into this very importantly. This first part I knew was going to be quite lengthy because it actually gets in depth about, depth about something that you've created that you often don't see. When you don't know what you're doing, you will form an idea of what you believe that you are. And we've called that the body. And the body has limitations. And the way that it was capable of forming itself was off of you using contrasts. Now it's time for you to go into a whole nother stage of yourself, which is going to allow you to see the benefits of the reality, the benefits of being you and who you truly are, right? And what you'll also be able to do, especially for those who begin to really work on this the most, is you'll begin to have what I call self over matter, right? So there's mind over matter. It's actually, it's a self over mind. Okay, so there's mind over matter, which is that first part. And this is not even giving, you know, oh, I got to eat this organic food. And if I eat this pizza, I'll die, you know. And it's like, so then you eat this pizza and you break out in a rash and all this stuff happens to you that used to not happen when you used to eat pizza all the time. Now, I'm not saying at all, go eat as much pizza as you want, because that will, too, have its own effects. But what I'm saying is if every single thing around you becomes what is hindering you, then you become this person in a bubble that when exposed into the reality or the matrix, which is completely programmable by you, you'll become more of a victim of living in the reality than in a person who actually is in control of the reality. And the reason why this is very important is because the challenge that comes when you enter into omniscience, the challenge is actually the difference between whether you are a servant or a sovereign. So let's take a moment and we'll look at this again. When we come forward, we'll talk about the differences between the servant and the sovereign and how 
the difference is so subtle that most that serve never realize the folly in it. But if you're to be a sovereign, then you must actually restore your birthright. You must get what has been supplanted from you. Now, some that maybe practice business and maybe join the course in aspects of under understanding business knowledge also, there will be that. But there can be no understanding the truth to the matter of what's going on in the matrix and what you need to do to actually become a sovereign as rapidly as possible if you don't realize the difference between a servant and a sovereign. So I want to say homes and balance vibrations for just a moment. This is a great time to be able to get some water and uh, to digest, you know, to collect your thoughts, to get your questions together. We're going to take about 10 minutes. And then when we come in on this again, we're going to get deep into just understanding the difference between the servant and the sovereign. We're going to make a few adjustments within the consciousness so that you're actually ready for this expansion of your own self. We're going to give some keys to exactly how to begin to remove yourself from the programming structure without using your mind, which kind of throws you back into it. And then we'll close off with understanding exactly where Earth is on its own saga, its own spiral of continuous repetition, rep repetitious force, and of course how you can get yourself into graduating over the phase of what generally becomes the end for projected realities that continue to function on duality, wholeness. Um, Return now for the second half, and uh, we're going to go ahead and get right into this. And uh, so, yeah, so let's let's not make any delay. Let's keep going with this. I don't want there to be too much time. So remember, um, what we talked about before we went to the break is about. So if all this that I'm explaining is true, and there is all these things that need your positive or negative energy, regardless, just to keep fueling the idea of who they are, as artificial forms. And also, it's possible that we may have created some of these artificial forms ourselves and that that sometimes may be called even our personality. It also means that this egregor can be very threatened by the higher sentience of yourself because your higher sentience, who you truly are, can actually perish while this egregor can suffer death by being burned. Now, this also is somewhat of a, a sim symbolism because burning something just means to change it into its most basis aspect, which is carbon, right? And so when you reduce all of your positive negative thoughts to just the prime, like, okay, well, that's still all carbon. And in the whole carbon-based saga, there's all of that, what you're talking about, the positive, the negative. It's basically the 666, the six electrons, six protons, and six neutrons. And everything that went with that, that's what you would be talking about. And then, meaning you would have to get to another point where that's not what you spent all your time doing for the rest of your existence is judging in these dualistic bodies that you keep coming in and out of. You would have to get control and begin to ride this beast, which is what it really is, and then get ready to transcend into your true self, okay? But of course, there is a battle then, <laughs> because just like anyone talks about in many of these sessions of where they talk about how to change your consciousness, how to change your mind, they talk about how the old self doesn't actually want to go anywhere, that it's very difficult to kill. Okay, let me just start this audio over here. I just see my lights blinking. I just wanna make sure that we, on the audio, excellent. Yep, just to it, it doesn't blink. Oh, okay, exactly, cool. All right, so I just want to make sure y'all have that good audio. So what happens is, is that if you think about this, okay, just follow me on this. So you have this other form that it can die. So of course it's afraid. It, it can't even change its mind that death doesn't exist. Let me, let me give you a very, very uh, deeper analogy of why most people can't see beyond death, okay? Like if we think about, uh, well, most people don't think about it, but there's this other side of things, like when you see something sprout up, but then it withers away, there's that other side that people don't, they don't want to see that. They want to see the sprout up part, the full bloom part. They don't want to see the over, over end part, right? So this means naturally is going to keep them imbalanced. So what happens is, is that if you then go to this aspect of yourself and you start realizing that there's actually this darker side to the character, then this is when you, in a tense, bring that side to, some people call it the light. You, come in, you bring it into recognition that it also does exist, that the same thing that you keep talking about that you don't like about others 
is the actual same thing that you do in another degree, right? Because it's all balanced, so you may be doing less than that, and they may be covering up the rest of the, the other side of more. So let me just get on track here of just uh, uh, for you to realize the next part of this, which is understanding the difference between the servant and the sovereign, okay? So I had this experience to where when I was finally powering through in my consciousness on this, uh, this meditation and this, you know how we do, we go on these journeys. So I'm in this, jour in this journey and then I get to this point where I feel like now I've controlled the mind to where it's not thinking. And I end up into this space where I just knew that I'm right before the all-knowing. And I literally feel like maybe an external presence that says, okay, well, if you created all of this, which is, of course, what you're saying, and this is your projection, this is your world, then why don't you know anything about it? And since I'm so high up there, you know, I'm on, you know, I'm on my accelerator, I'm thinking in my mind, okay, well, I don't want to answer back. I don't want to say that I don't know everything about this reality because there's things that, I guess, the chemistry and all that is what it's referring to. And, but I don't, I don't have that knowledge. I can't recollect that knowledge. And this is the first time I began to realize that the knowledge of this world, which is known as foolishness, this is not how any kind of criteria of who you truly are should ever be based. <laughs> Like what you learn, like how many colleges you've been to and, 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 and how high at the end of the day your numbers are and everything. Like how old did you end up becoming? How much money did you actually make? How many degrees did you get? How much time did you spend in something? All those high numbers, right, which the reality wants to see from you. None of that actually has anything to do with your limitless. Limitless has nothing to do with numbers. It has nothing to do with divisions. So sometimes when something is asking you to know everything, what you have to realize is to know everything by the standards of this world is still not to actually be able to answer the main questions. And that the truth is knowing is a feeling. It's not something that you need to go and study. It's actually a feeling. And then when you have that feeling, no one can waver you with, well, you need to have this degree, son, before you can get in here and do this. And you need to actually be a good speaker and, and be able to look really nice, to get in front of the camera, to talk, to change people. None of that is actually true. There's actually no sequences and no phenomena necessary to take place in order for you to get from zero to greatness in a very, very short period of time. And this, to me, is not just my revelation on it, not just what I think, it's what I know, it's what I experience. Because also another thing is, it doesn't actually take a spiritual component to, uh, or to, uh, to uh, comprehend something on just a spiritual level to realize that, hey, if everyone here is pretty much stuck in some level of judgment inside of a dualistic body, if for some reason I became trinary, if I put a three-third strand on my DNA to balance things out, that it's highly possible that I wouldn't behave like I ever, I've been behaving and everyone else around me is behaving. Let's maybe try that, right? And then obviously you then realize and when you try it that, oh, this is not so easy. I can't actually control my thoughts. I am really emotionally tied into things. And oh man, what do I do? Well, you begin the journey. You begin the training of the ambassador of yourself to lead yourself out of the egregor or old state of consciousness that is so in fear of losing its life. This is why, have you ever seen how the body acts when it thinks it's gonna die? <laughs> it has uh, subhuman strength as far as like it could throw cars over, it can run really fast, it could scream to the top of its lungs, it could do all these different things. So that actually is synonymous with what actually you need to transcend through. It's sometimes fighting like that, especially if it's learned very bad habits and it's got out of its original rights in which it was created. I would still say that the human body, the human being is a magnificent creation, but serving other beings is not what we were created to do. And I'll say that again. We were not created to serve and go into duality in the minds with the positive and negative in our minds and just to try to get a little bit of gold or a little bit of power. Uh, that's not what we were created for. We are infinite, and I can prove that. And through this session, I've been proving that. <laughs> I mean, that's over and over, but we do it again. Every time I get in front of the camera, it will be proving it over and over and over in different ways. So servant versus so sovereign. So what was being 
required of me is that I prove that if I created all this, that I began to explain in English into this thing in my mind about every single thing that I knew about it to confirm that I had created it. <laughs> when the, that is the biggest lie to believe that that's what you would need to do in order to get your birthright back. Because that's actually what's happening. Because if you can't say that you created it, that means you must say, you are saying that in your environment, in your reality, there is a creator and it's not you. So notice this is serious stuff. Like now you pass off the, the creative component onto something else and it gladly receives it. There's a ton of artificial forms in there that can see every single thing that's being done. So it takes that idea and it says, yeah, you're, you're right. You're my servant. Oh, shit. And then it starts writing a contract. It starts saying, okay, well, if you're my servant, then I want this from you, that from you, this from you, that from you, this from you. And this is actually the relationship of what is going on in the reality with ourselves inside of our minds. It's not happening outside of us. We have a way of externalizing what we're, what we're doing inside of here, but it stops inside of the consciousness before it can ever stop externally. So let's dig into this a little bit deeper now. So this service now. Because really fast, <laughs> what happens is a person can actually feel like that it's better for them to be a servant, that it's not all that bad. And if you want to look at how many people who, by their own text, say they're serving, that would include Freemasonry, that would include Christianity, that would include Islam, that would include all of those traditions at minimum, and many more that, you know, just we don't even spend time in naming them, all approach the throne as servants. Now, let me clear this up before somebody goes fanatic. If you not only look at what the text says itself, but it's contradictory because it's dualistic, but it, what it at least says one time about you being the son or daughter of God, obviously if a son or daughter ever grew up, then they would be a God. So that's proved right there. Then there's also mathematics, and those are for the logical people who don't like to actually believe in traditions, but like to see the fabric of the reality and what can measure those, that fabric, and that's numbers. It's awfully numb because there's so much to measure. But numbers still, when you get the principles of it, say that everything stems back into one thing, and then it disappears because it no longer needs to be aware of itself, and that's the process. It always is, and it just is. It doesn't question who it is. So what happens is before you reach that point, or if you've left it already, you have to come to the realization that mathematically, you're an heir. You're not a servant. <laughs> like whoever it is or whatever it is <laughs> that's up there, it would still be just as connected to you as it's connected to itself. Now remember, what they try to make it like is that this, the, the last stage of this is actually some sentient being. and No, it, it's beyond sentience. It's a connection with everything. You cannot get to it unless you are it. And this is the conundrum that we're in. So to become it, you must do it, not judge, right? But in entering that, you realize, ah, I'm back to myself <laughs> because I didn't judge myself unworthy because I didn't cut myself off from my, from my blessings and I didn't divide myself away from, so you didn't do any of that. I didn't use my sword, my words, and my cross to actually carve out a small little bubble for myself so I could become a zero, and on the other side would be, then be me, another zero, who's still waiting to connect with itself, to actually experience itself as not any side, but as actually the, pr the real prima materia, the real actual form that puts other forms, whether it's wood, metal, or human beings, into the awakening of themselves also just in presence, not in words at all, because you'll move on from that, but in presence, because in that presence, they're reading, oh man, this one's sure, but I'm not so sure. I'm not sure I'm brass, because this dude is all these particles, including brass, and if that's me, see, we have to see there's a sentience here, but you gotta unlock unity code. Unity code allows you to see the, the actual punch points of the actual grid that is around us that we're calling the organic grid. So we keep going and still realizing, okay, so let's, let's drill into this just a little bit. The servant versus the sovereign. 